Every 86 seconds, a brand new car rolls off the production line. That's 1,000 cars every single day. From nothing but sheets of metal and raw materials to a fully functioning vehicle that someone will drive home tonight. But here's what blows my mind. There are over 30,000 parts in a modern car, and somehow this factory orchestrates all of them to come together in perfect harmony again and again, without fail. Today, we're going inside one of the world's most advanced automotive factories. And by the end of this video, I'm going to show you the one critical bottleneck that determines whether this entire operation succeeds or fails. It's not what you think. And when you see it, you'll understand why every single second matters in this precision ballet of steel and robotics. Let's go inside. Before we step onto the factory floor, you need to understand the sheer magnitude of what we're about to witness. This facility spans over 5 million square feet. That's roughly 87 football fields under one roof. The building alone cost over $1.2 billion to construct, and it employs nearly 8,000 people working around the clock in three shifts. But here's where it gets interesting. To produce 1,000 cars per day, this factory doesn't just assemble vehicles. It's conducting a symphony of suppliers, logistics, and just-in-time manufacturing that would make your head spin. Over 300 trucks arrive at this facility every single day, delivering everything from engines and transmissions to the tiny plastic clips that hold your door panels in place. The factory operates on what's called talked time, a German word meaning the rhythm or beat of production. In this facility, the talk time is precisely 86.4 seconds. Every 86.4 seconds, one complete car must roll off the line. Not 87 seconds, not 85 seconds, exactly 86.4. Because if they miss that rhythm, even by a few seconds per car, by the end of the day, there are dozens of vehicles behind schedule. And staying on that rhythm, that's where things get really complicated. But we'll come back to that challenge later. Our journey begins in the stamping shop, where massive rolls of steel arrive like giant spools of ribbon. These coils weigh up to 25 tons each and contain enough steel to make the body panels for roughly 300 cars. The stamping presses are absolutely enormous. We're talking about machines that stand three stories tall and weigh as much as 800 tons. When they slam down, they exert up to 2,000 tons of pressure enough force to create a perfectly formed car door, hood, or fender from a flat sheet of metal in just three seconds. What's fascinating is the precision involved. These presses are forming metal to tolerances of less than a millimeter. That door panel has to fit perfectly with every other component of the car, so there's no room for error. The dies themselves, the massive molds that shape the metal, can cost up to $2 million each and take months to manufacture. The stamping shop runs continuously, producing about 6,000 individual panels per day. That's because each car needs multiple panels, and this one stamping shop is actually feeding three different assembly lines in the factory. The noise is deafening, like being inside a thunderstorm made of metal, but it's also oddly rhythmic. Boom, boom, boom. Every few seconds, another perfect panel, but raw panels are just the beginning now they need to become a car body. Welcome to the body shop, and this is where things get truly futuristic. Humans are now the minority. We're surrounded by over 400 robots, and their ballet of sparks and precision movement is mesmerizing. Each robot has a specific job, and they're programmed with such precision that they can place a spot weld to within 0.5 millimeters of accuracy. That's about the thickness of five human hairs. The robots work in coordinated teams, sometimes with five or six robots working on the same car body simultaneously, their arms weaving around each other in a carefully choreographed dance that was designed by engineers using advanced 3D simulation software. A typical car body requires between 3,000 and 5,000 spot welds to hold it together. At this factory, the robots complete an entire body structure in approximately 90 seconds. It's almost incomprehensible when you watch it happen. Panels arrive, robots grab them, position them, weld them, and suddenly there's a recognizable car shape where just moments ago there were only separate pieces of metal. But here's something most people don't know. The body shop is actually where quality is won or lost. 
If a body comes out even slightly misaligned, we're talking millimeters here, every subsequent step of production becomes harder, doors won't fit right, windows will have gaps, the paint won't sit evenly. So between robotic welding stations, there are precision measurement systems using lasers to scan every body and ensure it's within specification. And we still haven't added the most visible part of any car, the paint. The paint shop is where science meets art, and it's far more complex than you might imagine. Before a single drop of color touches that steel body, it goes through multiple stages of treatment. First, the body is completely submerged in a chemical bath that cleans and treats the metal to prevent rust. Then it's dipped in an electro coat primer. Essentially, the body becomes an electrode in a giant battery, and electrically charged paint particles coat every surface, even the hidden internal cavities that a spray gun could never reach. After the electro coat, the body enters a massive oven where it's baked at over 300 degrees Fahrenheit to cure the primer. Then it's sanded, inspected for imperfections, and finally ready for color. The actual color application happens in a sealed, climate-controlled room where the temperature, humidity, and air pressure are all precisely regulated. Why? Because paint is incredibly sensitive to environmental conditions. Too humid, and you get runs. Too dry, and you get an orange peel texture. The robots that apply the paint are programmed to replicate the movements of the factory's best human painters and they can change colors in less than 60 seconds by flushing their systems and switching paint supplies. Each car receives multiple layers, base coat, color coat, and clear coat. Between each layer, it's baked again. The entire paint process takes about 10 hours from start to finish, which is why the paint shop has to run slightly ahead of final assembly. They're essentially building up a buffer of painted bodies that will feed the assembly line when a body emerges from the paint shop, it's glossy, perfect, and ready for the most complex phase, final assembly. But there's something happening in final assembly that could bring this entire operation to a grinding halt, and I'm going to show you exactly what it is. This is it. The final assembly line is where everything comes together, and it's a masterclass in logistics and human skill. Unlike the robotic body shop, final assembly is primarily performed by people, because the variety and delicacy of tasks required still exceeds what robots can efficiently accomplish. The painted body is placed on an automated carrier that will move it through dozens of workstations. At each station, a team of workers has exactly, you guessed it, 86.4 seconds to complete their assigned tasks, not a second more. Station one, the dashboard, wiring harnesses, and central electronics Station 2, the windshield and windows. Station 3, the seats. Then the engine and transmission are married to the body from underneath. The wheels are torqued to precise specifications using calibrated tools. The doors are hung with millimeter precision. Fluids are added, coolant, brake fluid, windshield washer fluid, and of course gas for the first test drive. What's remarkable is the customization happening here. Cars aren't identical anymore. Every customer orders different options, different seat colors, different wheel designs, different technology packages. This means each workstation might be working on a completely different configuration than the car before it and the car after it. Workers have digital displays at each station showing them exactly what goes into each specific vehicle. The parts delivery system is a marvel in itself. Overhead conveyors, automated guided vehicles, and perfectly timed deliveries ensure that the exact parts needed for each car arrive at each station just moments before they're needed. This just-in-time system saves millions in inventory costs, but it's also incredibly fragile. And that brings us to the critical point I mentioned at the beginning. After all the robots, all the automation, all the billion-dollar technology, the most critical bottleneck in this entire factory that builds 1,000 cars per day is something surprisingly human quality inspection. At the end of the assembly line, each car goes through a rigorous inspection process. Trained quality inspectors spend about 20 minutes per vehicle checking hundreds of points. Do all the panels align correctly? Are there any paint defects? Do all the electronics function? Do the doors close with the right feel and sound? Then comes the real test, the road test. 
Every single car that leaves this factory is driven on a test track by a professional driver who's checking for vibrations, unusual noises, steering feel, brake performance, and dozens of other subtle factors that can only be assessed by actually driving the vehicle. Here's why this is the bottleneck. If quality inspection finds a problem, that car has to be pulled off the line and sent to a repair bay. Depending on the issue, repairs can take anywhere from 30 minutes to several hours. And while that car is being repaired, the assembly line keeps moving. Remember that 86.4 second tack time? It doesn't stop for rework. This means the factory is constantly balancing two opposing forces, the need to maintain speed and volume and the absolute requirement to maintain quality. Every car that needs rework is a car that didn't meet the standard on the first pass, and it's expensive, not just in repair costs, but in the complexity it adds to the system. The best factories achieve what's called first-time quality of over 98%. That means less than 2% of cars need any rework, but even at 98%, in a factory producing 1,000 cars per day, that's still 20 vehicles that need attention. Those 20 cars need tracking, diagnosis, repair, reinspection, and then integration back into the shipping schedule. Once a car passes all inspections, it receives its final preparation. Protective shipping covers are removed. The interior is given a final cleaning. The fuel tank is topped off. A window sticker with all the vehicle specifications and pricing is applied. Then the car is driven to the shipping yard where it waits with hundreds of other completed vehicles for transport to dealerships. Looking at this sea of new cars, all gleaming in the sun, it's hard to believe that just 18 hours ago, each one was nothing but individual components scattered across this massive facility. The logistics of shipping are their own marvel. The factory has to coordinate with railroads, trucking companies, and ship lines to move these vehicles across the country and around the world. Some cars will be at a dealership within days. Others might spend weeks in transit, traveling by rail and ship to international markets. So there you have it, the inside story of a factory that builds 1,000 cars per day. From 25-ton coils of steel to a vehicle you'd be proud to drive, all in less than a day, orchestrated with split-second precision. But here's what amazes me most. This factory represents decades of manufacturing evolution, billions in investment, and some of the most advanced technology on the planet. Yet the thing that determines success isn't the robots or the computers or the billion-dollar facility. It's the ability to maintain quality while moving at impossible speed. It's the constant balance between efficiency and excellence. And that quality bottleneck we discussed? The top manufacturers are now using artificial intelligence and machine learning to predict quality issues before they happen, analyzing thousands of data points from each car as it's being built to catch problems earlier in the process. Some are experimenting with augmented reality systems that help workers see exactly where each part goes and verify correct installation in real time. The factory that builds 1,000 cars per day isn't standing still. Even at this incredible pace, they're constantly evolving, constantly improving, because in automotive manufacturing, if you're not getting better, you're falling behind. The next time you see a new car on the road, remember, it's not just a vehicle. It's the endpoint of one of the most complex manufacturing processes humans have ever created, refined over more than a century, and still being perfected today. Thanks for watching. If you found this fascinating, let me know in the comments what other manufacturing processes you'd like to see explained. And if you want to see how electric vehicle factories are different or how engine manufacturing works, I've got those videos coming up next.